Dead Lake is northeast of Yangon, the former capital city of Myanmar. The people here have a long reputation of being independent, both politically and culturally. Rough roads, a long bus trip, and hot weather were my first impressions on my way to Inle Lake. It wasn't until my boat trip that I really started to see the beauty of this area. Now it seems to me that the local people, along with nature, has collaborated to make Inle Lake a very special place. Inle Lake is in the Shan State, which is the biggest state in Myanmar. It is the melting pot of many different ethnic groups and cultures. The lake itself is huge, the second largest in the country, with a surface area of around 116 kilometers squared. The Shan state is known for a particular dish made from tofu, but this tofu is very unusual. It's actually made from chickpea. So I'm off to a small village where I'm going to meet Lisu and her family to cook this traditional chickpea tofu noodle. It's hardly wait. For these locals, the lake is their home. Canals are their roads, canoes are their transport, and backyards are their floating gardens. This environment literally shapes the lifestyles of this village community. Misu! Thank you so much for having us. I'm so looking forward to cooking this tofu. Everyone's still waiting for you. Wow, what a great ride it was. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Very good. Before any cooking could begin, Miss Sue's mum, sisters and aunties insisted I sit with them and try my hand at making some local crafts. It's like talking, laughing, it's such a wonderful and peaceful time. I can hear and smell the monsoon rains outside as gentle conversations happen around me. One cup of small leaf. Now my technique needs a little work. This was it easy. I will definitely reflect on this time when I'm back in Sydney and stressed out in my restaurant kitchen. So this is the base of the soup. It's making your own tofu. But this isn't made from soybeans, but made from chickpeas. The chickpeas need to be soaked overnight and ground in these lovely old traditional stone mills. Now it is a long process, but making it with four beautiful women makes it a whole lot more enjoyable. Well, it looks like we've pressed well, enough like chickpea pressed liquid for the whole village. But don't fear, we've, we've got this fantastic, fantastic strainer fantastic with bamboo tied, tied to the ceiling and we've tied some muslin cloth to the bottom here. And I'm going to strain my chickpea liquid through.
whilst the liquid's getting straight through, I'm going to pour some water in, just to thin it out a little bit, just a little bit by bit, just a little bit by bit. I've got my bamboo paddles, just moving all the liquid around, so it gets strained nice and evenly. It's techniques like this that I so much enjoy doing. It's just wonderful. More water. More water. More water. More. 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 Miss Sue, thank you for showing me that. Such an interesting process. I love how everyone's involved in it. So with the liquid, we have to let that set for a couple of hours, two hours, so the sediment sinks to the bottom again, and then the liquid from the top, we've given it to your mum, Dolly Nguyen. And this is mum's recipe. Mum, thank you so much for showing us. And so the sediment down here, the thick water, we need to add to that as well, don't we? Okay, so I'll leave that there for you, just little by little. So whilst mum's doing that, I will make the chicken gravy. I'll, I'll put my pan on, I'll put my, my little wok here. Get that hot. So four tablespoons of oil. And this dish is a traditional Shan dish. Love dish. Loved by everybody here. Oh yes, especially for breakfast. It's just for breakfast. But you can eat it anytime. Anytime. So a bit of turmeric in there, just a touch like a quarter of a teaspoon or so. And then you have the onions. Yep, so onion. All of that? Oh yes. So I'm going to make this for your mum and aunties as well, so we put it all. Okay. So, Miss Sue, how does Shan cuisine differ from where I've come from, say Yangon or Yangon or Mandalay? They use more oil. Yes, they do use a lot of oil. Actually. We use less oil. Yes. And no fish paste or no fish sauce. We use instead uh, soy sauce, soy paste, and uh, tomato to make a little bit sour. It's a lot lighter, isn't it? It's not too, it's not too pungent with fish sauces and fish paste and shrimp paste and all that. It's a lot cleaner and aromatic. And I love this kitchen. This is traditional kitchen from Inlay. Yes. Like I love how everything is blackened and we're cooking with charcoal and right under me here I can see all the water, see all the boats parked under there. It's fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to cook that for around five minutes to let all the aromas come out. Maybe caramelize it a little bit. Okay, so this is looking really good now. You have to add ginger and ginger. So we've pounded this ginger and garlic together. I'll put that all in. Yeah. Always smells so good cooking me and my food. Okay, that's great. What's next? Tomato? So chopped tomato from the floating garden. Yes. And put all that in. And it's such a community around these villages, isn't it? Everyone helps each other and cook together. And yes. It's normal. It's our way of life. A lot of people. What's the most amount of people you've ever cooked for? 10,000 people. 10,000? You're kidding. Last month we had that costume, what we call the monk examination period. So well, we cook for 10,000 people. Per day. 10,000. How, <laughs> how do you do that? It's a well, lot of preparation and a lot of food. Yes, yes. Every village and every culture has their own responsibility. So we share who cooks the soup, who cooks the main dish. Yes. 10,000 people a day. Normal. <laughs> That's normal. My goodness. I'd love to come to that part. You love eating a lot. So do I. That's why I love being here. Right, so tomatoes in uh, paprika powder. Paprika powder. So a good, good teaspoon. Good big one. So a bit of spice, a bit of colour, and great, great smell from there as well. And you have to add some salt also, because salt we're going to... A bit of salt? A bit of salt? A bit of salt? Uh, no, uh, we don't use the uh, chicken salt. Salt, salt, salt instead of chicken powder. <laughs> I agree. We will put a little bit of salt. salt, because then we're going to help the tomato cook easier. Faster. Faster. Yeah. And after that, we will put the uh, chicken. Okay. Is that alright, Mum? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's recipe, you know? All right. So uh, chicken now? Yes. Chicken now. All right. I'll put the chicken in. All right. Put the chicken in. All right. Put the chicken in. So we've just diced the chicken. Yes. And traditionally you use a whole chicken, right? You don't, whole chicken, you don't just yeah. use the breast or the thighs, you use a whole lot, which is great. Don't waste anything. No, good. All right. Yeah. Good. 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 How does this look? Is that ready? It's been around 10 minutes. Yeah. That's good? Yes. Fantastic. So I'm going to take that off the heat. And Dolly Gray, how's your one? Can I have a taste? Can I have a taste? Can I have a taste? Oh, wow. It's like very thick consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Mmm. 
It's actually quite rich. It's lovely flavour. So I've got some rice noodles. Do I throw that straight into the tofu? Yes. So what would happen to this tofu if I just let it set? If I just let it cool? It will become hard. And then you put some tofu soup in there. Yeah. Okay, so on top of that, okay. yeah, bean sprout, bok choy, just finally chopped up and quickly blanched. Such an interesting dish, I've never seen anything like it. Sesame. Okay, so a teaspoon of sesame. And uh, ground beef peanuts. And then we can put uh, a little bit, especially fried garlic. Fried garlic, crunchy garlic with the oil. And then uh, a little bit of soy sauce, for those who like the salty. And sugar cane syrup. Wow, so you've just melted that. Just dissolve it with a bit of water. If you like sweets, you can add more. Oh, the breeze has just come in. The rain's arrived. It's so nice. It's so beautiful around here with monsoon season. When the rain comes, everything's green and lush. Yes, yes. I love it. Oh, so do I. It's wonderful. So that's it. For vegetarian, that will be the dish. Yep. If you're a meat eater, then you know, we will add your... Of course. Your, your, your... I put some in. I would love to try some of this chicken. Yes. Which is gravy. So a good spoon in on top. Yes. A good on top. Yes. And mum, what would you call this dish? Mom, what would you call this dish? Tofu noi. Tofu noi. Warm tofu soup. Thank you. Tofu soup. Thank you. And the tomatoes are the all tomatoes grown are right, all on the grown, right on the lake, lined up in rows, lined up in rows just, like rows. just like on a vineyard. Like you might think that like all this water would slow down, down production, down but no, down it all works really well. Works you don't really have to worry about really irrigation, about and, getting and getting them to the market isn't a problem. These long tail boats are fast and can carry around two tons of tomatoes. The port of Nuang Shui is a city unto itself. Temples, restaurants and hotels line the banks. It's the end of the journey for the local growers. Tons of tomatoes have just arrived from the Inle Lake region in the floating gardens. Now they've come here to the local wholesale market of tomatoes. I have so much respect for these guys. They're lovely sacks every day, all day. 60 kilos per sack. I'm going to give them a hand. OK, let's do it. Oh, wait. Alright, I think I'm okay. They do this every day, all day. My gosh. Hard work, I tell you. Hard work. It doesn't stop here. There's no forklifts or trucks, just muscle and sweat to get these tomatoes to the warehouse. I've never worked so hard. Hard work is good. Look at those green tomatoes. My goodness. Fantastic. Mm, I really like the tartness of these ones. And great texture, really crunchy. Perfect for green tomato salad.
7,000 acres of floating farms produce all these tomatoes. Now the men have dumped all their sacks of tomatoes here and the women sort them out, the red ones from the green ones. And towards the back, they sort it to three different grades. 60% of the tomatoes go to Mandalay and 40% go to Yangon. Now I know traditionally you would have red tomatoes and make red tomato salad, but for me, I really, really enjoy eating the green ones. Now, when you're choosing green tomatoes, don't choose the really firm ones, you want the mature green ones. I really like these ones because they're so textural and when you eat them, it's almost like eating a... Um, like a zucchini actually, like a zucchini, has a actually. mild zucchini, sweet actually. flavor, I love the tanginess and the sharp flavors of green tomato. Because of their firmness, it's really great to barbecue or grill as well. So I'm going to slice them up there, so as fine as you can, oh, they're actually really, really sweet. Just a slight amount of tang, not sour at all. I'm going to put my sliced tomatoes into my mixing bowl. Now these ladies work so hard, they sit there for 10 hours per day until they finish this. And if they don't finish it, they just keep Keep working. Keep quite amazing. Keep okay, so I've got some okay, red so Asian shallots sliced up. Now in the Shan area, they've told me to slice them up, soak them in water, and then strain them. It just gets rid of that powerful spiciness of the Asian shallots. Got a handful of those. I've got some coriander, a big handful of sliced coriander in there. Some black sesame seeds, ground. Now I haven't toasted this because when you toast black sesame seeds, they actually go slightly bitter. So I'm going to put a lot of those in around two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of peanuts as well. It's a great texture. I've got some chili as well. Just some dried chili. A bit of spice, a bit more. I like spice. And some garlic oil. Lots of garlic oil. Lots of flavor. I'm going to put around three teaspoons of that in. And a bit of salt. And a, a good pinch of salt, actually. Of salt, actually. Good pinch of salt, actually. I'm going to mix it all up. I'm going to mix it all up. I'm going to mix it all up. Now, as you can see, now, as really you see, simple really salad, perfect, salad, perfect salad, to, salad, to accompany perfect any dish. So don't shy away from using green tomatoes. They're absolutely fantastic. Onto my plate there. Onto my plate there. Onto my plate there. And this is a very traditional, a very traditional Shan, Shan salad. Shan salad. Shan salad. I'm going to garnish it I'm gonna with garnish it. Gonna garnish a bit of fried it. garlic, fried bit garlic. Of fried some sliced red chili, as little as much as you like, and just a bit more coriander leaves on top. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's an awesome salad. And that's an awesome My salad. green that's an awesome tomato salad, salad from the Shan State. Kian Shin Didok. I noticed all the fishermen row their boats using one leg. They do this so they can see over the reeds and spot the fish. Inlay fishermen also have a unique way of catching fish. These bamboo cones are dropped into the water. As they sink, a net drops and the fish are caught. But I think the fish had an inkling they were on the menu because my friends here were having no luck. So I decided on a local favourite instead. Spring onion fritters. Now these onions are grown locally in the floating farms. Long stems and a little onion at the bottom. So I'm going to cut around 10 of those up. Cut the roots off. And the green stems into around 3 centimeter lengths. And don't waste the onion at the bottom either. Nice, powerful. Powerful flavour, nice, very, very, flavor. Sweet very, very sweet as well. Very, very Put that into your bowl. Sweet. I'm going to chop that into long lengths. In there as well. In and there one, as tomato. Well. And one tomato. And one nice tomato. local tomato, tomato. Nice local from the floating tomato. farms as well. Farms as well. Cut, that into Cut that into thin pieces. Thin pieces. Thin pieces. Perfect dish Perfect to dish. eat with Perfect beer. Dish. And the local beer. ladies call it a gossiping dish. I call it a drinking dish. All right. Another tomato in. Another tomato in. Another tomato in. Now this isn't just an ordinary no, just spring onion fritter. Asian, Asian shallots fritter. goes in as well, around one, around finely sliced, finely sliced, finely sliced. I've got a teaspoon of a hot teaspoon pepper, pepper powder, of pepper powder. Pepper nice powder. spice, nice great spice. colour as well. Whilst I'm doing well. this, I'm going to put my oil, oil on. So you need a hot wok, lots of peanut oil for deep frying. And then I've got some salt as well, around a teaspoon of salt. And I've pounded up some ginger and garlic, so beautiful aromatics. 
Now what you got to do now, now what you is combine now, all these flavours with some flour. With some I've got a bit of baking powder, so around half a teaspoon of that. Five tablespoons of rice powder or rice flour. And three tablespoons three of tablespoons glutinous three rice flour. Glutinous great rice texture, flour. great texture, great texture, great and combines it all together. So I'm going to mix that up. So I'm going to mix that up. So I'm going to mix that up. Get all the flavors infused into all, all the vegetables there. And now I'm going to pour in some local beer. Just around half a cup or so. But pour it in slowly. Just until you get everything stuck together. Now you can use water if you like, but it's such a great drinking dish. I'm going to use local beer. I'm going to use local beer. I'm going to use local beer. So you want it quite thick. So you want it quite thick. You don't want it too runny. You want it to, you want it to runny. clump all together. You want it to clump all together. To clump all together. Now that's looking pretty good, that's nice and sticky. Good. That's looking I'm checking my oils hot enough. Wooden chopstick is bubbling, it's ready to go. Just grab a little clump like that and throw it in the hot oil. And throw it in the hot oil. throw it in the hot oil. And they should all combine should together. All combine they should together. all combine Ooh, together. Smells good. Ooh, smells good. Ooh, smells good. So you're pinching it all together. So pinching it all together. Dropping it in. Dropping it in. Nice big pieces. Nice big pieces. So you need to fry this just for a couple of minutes, and then turn it over. And then turn it over. And then turn it over. Now whilst I'm waiting for that to cook, we're going to have a swig of beer. Swig of beer. Swig of beer. Oh, oh, perfect. Perfect scenery, perfect scenery, perfect scenery, perfect dish, perfect scenery, perfect dish, a lovely perfect afternoon, dish. a lovely afternoon, a lovely afternoon. Mm. Mm. A big swig mm. does a big the job, swig. a big does swig makes cooking a whole lot more fun. Turn it over, turn it over. This is looking really good. This is looking great looking really good. Great color, great color, great color. Now whilst that's frying, now whilst that's frying, I'm going to make some sauce. I'm gonna make so some dipping sauce, sauce of tamarind. Sauce I've got some tamarind pulp. I've soaked it in some hot water, and I've strained it through a sieve. And you're left with tamarind water. I'm going to balance that out with some sugar. Balance that out with some sugar. Some salt. Some salt. Because the tamarind's quite tart. A bit of ginger and garlic pounded. Some chili. Some chili. Or spice. And also some sliced coriander. Some coriander. Look at that for a dipping sauce. Look at that for a dipping Perfect. sauce. Perfect. For a dipping sauce. Perfect. All right. Perfect. That's ready to go. That's ready I'm going to take out my fritters. Nice golden brown. Golden brown. Ooh, that looks good. Ooh, that looks good. Ooh, that looks good. Into my plate. Into my plate. Into my plate. Look at that. Now I'm going to serve that. Now I'm going to serve that. With serve my that. dipping with sauce. My with dipping sauce. My dipping sauce. And just behind me here, you can see me, the scenery is just so stunning, scenery and stunning and beautiful. Lotus ponds everywhere. Lotus ponds everywhere. Lotus ponds everywhere. Look at this. I love the lotus plant. You've got the lotus root that you can eat that's grown in mud, and then the stems come up here. You can chop up the stems and have it in salads. They are also used to make the finest quality silk. The lotus stems are broken. And then with great skill, with great the skill, threads great inside skill, are threads rolled together are to create together, this, to lotus create silk. this lotus silk. The rhythmic motion the of the looms weaving this material is hypnotic. And I'm told lotus silk is much more expensive than traditional silk. And the flowers as well, beautiful pink flowers, you can pluck them off, you can grab your spring onion fritter in the middle. Now it almost looks too pretty to eat. Wrap that up, dunk into your tamarind sauce. Oh, can't wait. Mmm. Mm, flavors are just mm, awesome. Are just, so, are just crispy. awesome. so crispy. Bit of spice. So crispy. Bit of spice. That's my crispy. That's my spring onion fritters. Spring onion fritters. To Mekong journey, I visit Keng Tung, the last of my destinations in Myanmar. I journey up the mountains where I cook a stir fried aromatic smoked beef with Ayi from an An village. The colors in this is just fantastic, so vibrant. And this lady from Palang village was equally a joy to spend time with. 
I cook up her local specialty, a warm buffalo skin salad. Do you want a bit more?